live in the moment. Yeah. But it's it's not reality when you consider that phrase. Mm -hmm. when approaching a weather forecast, right? Especially during hurricane season. What if we just told you to live in the moment? And, and there's all these questions that, mm -hmm. are, that are swirling around. People asking really the same thing. Uh, what's going to happen next? Oh, they just never stop asking. Never. That. Uh, but that's a good thing, right? Our understanding of the strongest storms on the planet, it has increased astronomically over the past several decades. But even then, there is still so much to learn about hurricanes. A task with that responsibility is an important federal agency under the U.S. Department of Commerce. It's NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and within NOAA is the National Weather Service. We also have the National Hurricane Center. Oh, and yeah, also hmm. these folks, a group of pilots and researchers known as the Hurricane Hunters. And it's because of the Hurricane Hunters that we're able to get video like this, not only there for the unique perspective and views, but also collecting data to help improve forecasts for any storm that's threatening land. That info eventually helping researchers to further study the exchange of energy we see between between the ocean and the atmosphere during these extreme storms. The beauty of science. Let's bring in Jason Dunyan, science director of NOAA's Hurricane Field Program, mm -hmm. the Hurricane Field Program. Uh, Jason, making some waves, uh, you could say maybe the size of Bigfoot. I heard that Marissa and I, we were talking, we need some clarification because there's this program now called the, the SAS Watch or the SAS Quatch uh, program. <laughs> uh, when someone says, what is that? How do you answer it and how do you say it? It's a great question, and it's a catchy name for sure. I mean, Sasquatch is a is a program that's looking at that hurricane engine. You you were alluding to it. How does that fuel, that gasoline from the ocean, get up into the atmosphere and help to crank up the hurricane? So it's trying to answer all those questions. And it's the hurricane engine is very complex. Mother Nature didn't leave us a lot of blueprints for it. So there's a lot that we're still trying to figure out. And and I guess one of the challenges you could say with hurricane research is you can really only do it. When you have a research, when you have an or when you have an active storm, we were saying we kind of kind of living in the petri dish, right? And um, yeah. and when it comes to this research, how do you dice it up? Because you have all these varying components when it comes to hurricane forecasting. So would the goal be to somehow bring it all together? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, the the all together is what makes a hurricane tick, right? What makes it track the way it does? Forecast track is very important, the intensity, and even the structure. What is the structure of that hurricane? So a lot of our work in the field starts with these Genesis systems. We're actually going to start flying a system early next week that's come off of Africa, all the way to something that might rapidly intensify before it makes landfall. So it's that whole life cycle, that package deal that becomes important to really fully understand these storms that keep coming at us one after another during the hurricane season. A lot of people like to know what tools are in the tool shed, mm -hmm. to use that analogy, Jason. And Sasquatch, while it may or may not be real, um, <laughs> we know with NOAA, that's, a, that's an acronym. And, and it's like, my word, what, what are the components that make that up? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's, it's correct. The, Sasquatch stands for the study on air-sea coupling with waves, turbulence, and clouds at high winds. So that is a mouthful, but it is this more holistic approach to hurricane mm -hmm. forecasting, trying to get everything under the same umbrella. So when we're talking about the tools, is there one to you that sticks out more than, than others, one that you kind of have a, a personal love for? That was a great grasp on the acronym, by the way. That's a tough one. <laughs> My favorite is the tail Doppler radar. So yeah. a lot of weather stations have Doppler radars all across the country. Our flying laboratories, our P3 hurricane hunters, have Doppler radars as well. But rather than wait for the storms to come to us, we go out and, and fly them as they're coming from Africa. And it, you can almost think of it as a 3D CAT scan of the winds. And it's allowed us recently to diagnose how is the tilt in a storm? You know, a hurricane loves to stand up straight. It's kind of like a skateboarder. And if they're tilted, they don't energized. They don't intensify as well. And we can actually use that tail Doppler radar from the flying laboratory to get a sense of how healthy is that vortex, that heart of the storm, and what might the future be? If it's starting to line up, we might expect it to intensify pretty quickly. And, you know, you talk about the tail Doppler, and that is on a flying laboratory, right? These aircrafts that we yeah. have with the hurricane hunters. But there are some resources that are unmanned, right? You can have the buoys, you can have various things that are actually collecting the data, maybe at a different level in the atmosphere, but without anybody on board and any risk to life. Do you think there is a future where we see NOAA relying a little bit more on that unmanned equipment? 
Yeah, that's a great point. And Sasquatch launched a lot of buoys, you know, uncrewed buoys that are measuring the storm as, as Hurricane Aaron passed overhead. One of the really interesting ones, and in, you see it in the video, was the Black Swift drone. And we actually launched those out of the hurricane hunters. You can think of them as little weather stations with wings. They pop, the wings pop out uh, once it goes out of the plane. And it's able to fly for about an hour and a half into parts of the storm where we don't want to take those crewed aircraft, especially down near the ocean, the atmosphere, that interface where it's very dangerous, but there's a lot to learn down there. And you think about these drones, they're going to get bigger and they're, their performance is going to increase. And I think the future is that we have to keep using our flying laboratories to develop this technology and really take everything, take forecasts to another level. We love more data as we have seen the growth of AI too and using new AI models in forecasts. Uh, no, even the National Hurricane Center doing that, watching how uh, Google AI is, mm -hmm. is doing this season, among others, uh, brought to you by a European model too. The bottom line here, so someone's hearing us today, this project, it, did I read it correctly? It's, it's going to, to last for the next three years is, is that sort of the lifespan? And, and what's the end game? What's the, the end goal? Is it to better know and observe the Atlantic, or is it to help with the forecast, or maybe both? Yeah, maybe both, exactly. What, what we learn in the Atlantic, we can really use in other parts of the world as well. And you're right, it's a three-year program. Started testing the waters in the field this year, and they'll be out more in force next year. And I, I think one of the big things that, that that program wants to take away is, how does that fuel, right? My car uses fuel. We, we build engines, we know how a car works, but we don't have all the blueprints for how the hurricane engine works because mother nature built that one. So we can better understand that. We can improve our forecasts, especially for intensity. How is that gasoline from the warm ocean making its way into the atmosphere to fuel the hurricane? And I think the end game there is you can improve hurricane intensity forecasts with the models. So what we learn, our basic understanding out in the field can go a long way in the future. Excited to see what we're able to gain from this because mm -hmm. the reality is we've got millions of people every season that are impacted by these landfalling systems. And while you never want to see that and the destruction and, and how catastrophic it could be, on the other side of it, you have this magnificent piece of energy yeah. turning in the ocean and yeah. how, yeah, the, the thrill of being able to study it and maybe beat Mother Nature at her own game. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate your time. Jason Dunyan, Science Director of NOAA's Hurricane Field Program. Thank you for hanging out here on Weather Command. Thanks for having me. Good luck with conquering Sasquatch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>